Okay guys, today what I'm going to do is show you my technique for making chicken marsala and I'm going to show you how I'm going about cleaning it up, making it gluten free um, and trying to minimize the amount of fat that I use um, in my recipe. Um, I'll, I'll show you where I would vary and make what I'm going to call normal chicken parm or chicken marsala. Um, but um, it's, I'm actually pretty proud of this. I tried it the other day um, and I took my inspiration from just coconut flour that I found in um, the supermarket. I went to Trader Joe's. Um, what I liked about it, I was reading the back, um, carbohydrate 21 grams, 13 grams of dietary fiber. So it's pretty powerful stuff. Um, we're not going to use all that much of it, but the little bit that we're going to use is going to is going to thicken the sauce a little bit. And I'll show you how to build the sauce from start to finish. Let's put that aside. So what I have here is about five... I'm, I, my portions are between four and six ounces. I'm actually using five ounces of chicken, sliced very thin. I'm gonna salt it a little bit. A little bit of pepper. And now I'm gonna dust on a little bit of the coconut flour. I don't wanna use a lot because what I learned what, when I tasted it was that it's actually pretty sweet stuff. Uh, it's not like white flour in, in terms of like being neutral. It's very sweet, so you don't want to use too much, but you want enough to kind of thicken the, the, the gravy. I haven't forgotten about salting it. I just want to get this on, get it nice and coated. And then I'll wash my hands and salt that second side. I don't want to contaminate my shakers. In the meantime, I'm going to preheat my pan. I'm using a non-stick Swiss Diamonds frying pan just because I'm using not a lot of oil. I would use a cast iron for this actually because um, that's non-stick also, but those tend to suck up oil. so. Um, like I said, I'm not using too much oil here. So a little bit of salt. Cap that up. A little bit of pepper. And again, I'm going to push it in. Wash my hands. Okay, so let's talk about ingredients now. So I said I got my five Four, usually four to six ounces of chicken. Um, I have, I'm doing five right now, um, just because I'm kind of hungry, but not that hungry. I have one cup of chicken stock, and I have Marsala wine. We're gonna use about a quarter cup. And what I also have are some mushrooms, because what's chicken Marsala without the mushrooms? That's actually what everybody remembers when they think about chicken Marsala. And I have some chopped parsley. And that's it, it's basically a handful of ingredients. Um, and you're gonna, we're gonna make the most delicious um, meal ever here. So, and it's clean. So, I'm gonna use my olive oil spray um, just because it can get me a nice coating on the pan. You could use regular olive oil if you want. Um, right now, I'm just trying to cut my fat by a lot, so I'm just gonna use as little olive oil as possible. Um, if I were doing this regularly, I would start. I would start double the chicken to make two servings. I would do a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter. And what would happen is when you put regular flour on this, that would start to build a roux in the pan and that would help to thicken the, the sauce at the end. So I'm going to liberally coat probably about a teaspoon's worth of oil in there. And now I'm just going to lay this in the pan like so. Now, I want both sides to cook up really well. And basically the technique is you, you're gonna cook both sides, kind of par cook it, not cook it all the way through. Um, we're gonna take it out and then we're gonna build the sauce. So I have my plate here. If you're following the um, DDP yoga eating plan, um, this is perfectly well for um, phases one, two, or three. Um, today I'm gonna have it with a little bit of gluten-free pasta. So that's more of a phase two dish. Um, yeah, I'm gonna also have a little bit of um, 
sauteed spinach, just with a little garlic and olive oil. So you just want to do maybe maybe two to three minutes per side. You kind of want to get it cooking almost all the way through. I'm going to try this a little bit later with a, with a venison that my dad gave me. He gave me venison um, cutlets. I'm going to make a couple of tweaks. Instead of using chicken broth, I'm going to, I'm going to actually use beef broth kind of drive home that richer flavor. Um, and I actually found this, this rub, the barbecue with coffee and garlic rub, that I think instead of the coconut flour, salt and pepper, I think I'm gonna use this. And that'll kind of help to build more of a rich sauce. Um, generally, gamier meats can stand up to that kind of thing. Um, just showing you kind of a variation of where you can go with this. I mean, I could have used beef broth here, make kind of a richer gravy. You could use vegetable stock. Um, we're gonna have the mushrooms in there, so that's gonna kind of give uh, a, a lot of flavor in the background as well. So, my chicken is ready to be flipped. So I'm basically just gonna flip it over. And you could see it's kind of a little bit brown on the one side, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Just a little bit of brownness. So we're gonna go back on the heat. And this is, I mean, I, I made chicken marsala thousands of times. Um, it's just one of those things one day I said, you know, I'm really in the mood for chicken marsala, um, but I'm eating a little bit stricter. You know, it's, it's, it's around the new year, so trying to start a new eating plan, just getting a little more back in focus with my fitness. And um, yeah, that's kind of what the inspiration behind this one was. I mean, as if you need an excuse to eat chicken marsala. So again, just going to let it go for a second. I'm going to take it off. Now this is not fully cooked, which is the point. You kind of don't want it fully cooked at this point. So now I'm going to I'm going to use a little bit more oil for this part because mushrooms tend to suck up a lot of olive oil. I have a Portuguese olive oil that I got at Whole Foods. Um, I'm going to put in about a teaspoon. Again, whenever you pour like that. Uh, you tend to, to over overdo, like I, I said a teaspoon, that's probably more like a half a tablespoon. Okay. You can go the mushrooms. I want these a nice base on the pan. I'm going to salt the mushrooms a little bit. Um, generally, um, you, you, with mushrooms, you kind of want to salt at the end for the most part. In this case, I want to get out as much of the moisture as I can and actually um, start to kind of make them a little bit chewy. So just a little salt. I like a lot of ground pepper. Now this isn't going to take very long. The pan is already very hot. It's going to leave a lot of nice mushroom flavor to it. So I'm just going to let that go for another minute. Turn up the heat a little bit. Measure out my Marsala wine. I'm measuring just because um, Measuring is good. I don't want to overdo it, especially with something like Marsala wine. There's quite a bit of sugar and there's the alcohol, but we're going to cook the alcohol out. So it's going to not be a factor in terms of calorie-wise at the end. But again, I just control is everything. You want to be in control. That's why you cook at home. If, if, um, if I don't want to be in control, I'll go to a restaurant and spend some money for a, a you know, good chef to cook for me. Nothing wrong with that, but you can't, you can't, I'm, not a lot of people can afford to do that every day, so, definitely not me, not that I want you to feel sorry for me or anything. Okay, so, get these nice and glistened, so that's about it, you just want them softened just a little bit, you can kind of see there. And now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to shoot in off the heat, shoot in the marsala, and immediately you see it bubbles up, smokes up. Now you want to let that go for a couple seconds. It's going to kind of rehydrate the mushrooms a little. And 
when there's a little bit of liquid, and that's just about enough, I'm actually going to pour in the stock. And I'm going to crank the heat on that a little bit. I want to bring that back up to a boil as quickly as possible, just because you guys don't want to be here all day watching me cook chicken marsala. I don't want to be here all day cooking chicken marsala. So basically the, the, the gist of what we're doing here, we, we, our mushrooms kind of flavored the, the base of it. Um, our marsala wine deglazed, and then our stock is going to kind of build um, kind of a sauciness. Now this isn't going to be a, a really thick sauce. Um, usually with, with the floury roux, you get a little, a little thicker of a sauce. Um, this is going to be a little bit thinner, but that's okay because... I have my spinach and I have my gluten-free pasta that I kind of want it to seep into and flavor a little bit. Um, when I did this the first time, I actually um, I added a, a half a teaspoon of uh, coconut flour. I, I put it into there, and what ended up happening was it made a grainy sauce at the end, and it really wasn't very good. So um, I would I would recommend not doing that. Um, I guess you could use a little bit of cornstarch here, uh, but but just remove some of the liquid. Thicken up, um, wet the cornstarch a little, and then pour it into pour it into there. Rather than, because um, if you do that, it'll clump. Uh, if you if you put it right into the liquid while it's hot, um, and that's really not tasty either. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put my chicken back in the sauce, and I'm going to let it reduce. Now you see there's a little bit of drippings in the in the plate it was in. I'm actually going to try to get all of that because that's all the good stuff. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit because it doesn't need to be so high. Now I'm going to start building my plate. So here, I had sauteed up a little bit of spinach. Basically what I did was a um, teaspoon of olive oil in a, in a hot pan with a, one large clove of garlic um, and just cooked it for, for two minutes. And, and when I say cooked it, I got the pan hot, put the spinach in, removed the pan from the heat, and just tossed the spinach around. That's really all it takes. So I'm just going to kind of get it on the plate. Now I'm not going to win a James Beard award here for my plating or anything. So I'm really just making it as tidy as possible. And I like I like the little bits of garlic. You can pick you could pick around those if if you're not too much of a fan of it. I'm just going to watch this. I don't want it to get too too reduced. I do want it to reduce quite a bit though. So there's that. Here's my gluten-free pasta. I'm using Barilla. Um, I, I actually just tried this recently and I really like it quite a lot. Um, it tastes almost like normal pasta to me. The only thing I don't like about it, usually what I'll try to do is make a little extra sauce and then toss the pasta in. It doesn't cling as well as a semolina pasta would, but that's fine. So a little bit of pasta. Like I said, I'm not going to win a James Beard Award for this. Let's see here. Let me grab a spoon. Basically, it's hard to tell the thickness of the, of the sauce um, while it's in the pan. So what I like to do is actually try to just get kind of deep in it. And right there, that looks kind of still like the consistency of chicken stock. So I'm just going to leave that for another couple minutes, kind of crank up the heat a little more. Um, you basically you're in control of the heat, so um, I don't want to I don't want to burn anything. This has a tendency; it, it'll actually reduce pretty quickly. Um, I don't want that to happen. I want to I want to be in control of the thickness of the sauce at the last minute. I mean, this whole plate of food um, is is under 500 calories in terms of, uh, if you're looking at macros, probably has, you know, between 30 and 35 grams of protein, maybe even a little bit more, and quite a bit of fiber from the um, spinach and the gluten-free pasta. You want to try to rotate the chicken every once in a while, just because it has a tendency to cook on one side, and like Emerald used to say, I hate one-sided tasting food kind of thin. This is about the time where I got um, 
impatient with it last time, and I'm not gonna let that happen. I'm just gonna just gonna let it go. I mean, you could see the whole cook time of this is gonna be less than 10 minutes from raw chicken to your final plate. So it's not really something that, that takes a hell of a long time. I'm gonna be doing a lot of these little cooking segments from time to time, just cause they're, they're kind of quick to put together. Um, so if there's anything that you wanna see, uh, I, would, I would urge you just to send me an email, Twitter, Facebook, you guys know where to find me. Um, having a new design on the website soon um, it's going to be a little more visual, so we're going to have, I'm going to have a lot more of these types of things. Um, recipes are going to be printable. Um, you know, the, there's going to be links to the videos on YouTube. Um, so you're really not going to want to miss that. Um, and again, if you, if there's something that you want to see, I mean, I, I'll do normal versions of something and I'll do cleaned up versions of stuff if you want. Um, th this was one that just came to me because I saw the coconut flour and I said, you know, what the hell? I mean, the, the, probably would work so did a little research about how well coconut flour thickens gravies and came up with this so I guess next time if I wasn't in such a rush I'd probably use less stock but again the more stock that you use the the more flavor you're gonna get out of the out of the sauce as it reduces because you have more of that chicken flavor and again you could use beef stock uh, I don't like to use too many beef stocks because they're, they're hard to, harder to find low sodium. Um, so I use low sodium chicken stock and then I can control the salt content um, in that as well. Okay, this is almost done. You can kind of tell it kind of starts to stick to the pan, but there's only a little more to go. Um, you have to put up with me just for another couple of minutes. And by this time, the chicken is definitely going to be cooked because you kind of do, you do a quick fry and then kind of a little braise um, in, the, in the liquid here, in the sauce. And, and as, as it reduces, as it braises your chicken, it becomes the sauce. Now, this is the point where you have to be careful because it'll go really quickly. So you just want to kind of shake it. You can kind of see on top of the chicken, it'll kind of start to run a little. And you can see how thick it is. You don't want it to go too thick. I want. I still want a little bit of sauce for everything else. All right, and that's it. So, to plate it, what I'm just gonna do is go with my chicken. Go with my chicken. Toss the mushrooms a little bit. Oh, of course I forgot a step. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of fresh parsley. And what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna thicken it a little more. And it's just gonna flavor the sauce a little. You'd be amazed how, how a little bit of parsley changes the depth of the flavor and things. Brightens it up a little. So, mushrooms. And then I'm gonna go over with my sauce. And there you have it. So that's kind of my chicken marsala. You could see the sauce is not quite as runny as stock, but it's sauce, so. Now let's take a bite. It's a mushroom. See, the chicken's all the way cooked. It's nice and moist because we cooked it in liquid. Um, you don't want to keep it in there too long. Um, because what will happen is it will dry out, but you can see there it's actually quite moist. Mm. So it has kind of that sweetness that you associate with the chicken marsala. Um, it's not quite as um, pasty. I, I, I tend to find that a lot of restaurant marsalas get a little pasty, especially when it sits on a plate for a few minutes. So it doesn't have that pastiness because the coconut flour doesn't really thicken it up quite as much as... Um, regular all-purpose white flour would but I mean this tastes like just like the, all the flavors are there um, and to me it's actually even more of a pleasant um, pleasant texture um, again that's one of those things that when, when people clean up dishes they don't really think about texture but you know this is actually really good definitely recommend it taken with everything else it works pretty good so there you have it. There's my cleaned up chicken marsala. 
Again, if you have any ideas for recipes, visit my website, DairyX.com. Um, find me on Twitter, DairyX. On Facebook, um, just search for Jerry Papandrea. Um, you could friend me. I don't have a Facebook page anymore. Um, so, yeah, uh, you, you know, you know where to find me.